In this short video, I'll be looking at two different ways of making copies of your ancestry family tree. And you maybe want to make a copy for a number of reasons. Maybe you wish to work offline, maybe you wish to work in a different system, or maybe you're suspending your ancestry subscription for a little while. But anyway, it's important to have a backup copy of your family tree, just in case something goes wrong with ancestry. We'll be looking at two different ways here. We'll be looking at the JetCom way, which is the old traditional way, which is transferring a flat file in a particular format between systems. And we'll be looking at synchronization where, where I can use my own PC tools and Ancestry to synchronize the database between two systems. First of all, we'll look at the JetCom way, which is the traditional way. And for both these examples, I'll be using Roots Magic. And just because I use Roots Magic personally, and I know pretty much how it works. There are other ways of doing this, of course. But first of all, log on to your Ancestry system, go to Tree Settings, and you can download your JEDCOM file from here. And this file I'm downloading is a pretty small file, just 3,500 people in it. And it'll take a little while, and you'll end up with a file. In this case, I've got six megabytes of Data. I normally download it to the desktop because it's easier to find. Normally you don't keep these for very long because as soon as you make a change to your Ancestry database, the previous JetCom file is out of date. So you'll only be keeping this for a little while while you do the actual transfer. So now I have my JetCom file on my laptop or computer. I have it on my desktop. I can go into Roots Magic, assuming that you bought Roots Magic. In 2023, it's about $40 for a new copy, probably less if you're upgrading. And log into Roots Magic and then go and create a new Roots Magic file. And we'll tell Roots Magic we want to upload a JEDCOM to it. And then we'll go and actually go to my desktop and identify the JED file that I'm going to upload. And at this stage, I can give it a different name, which I probably would do within Roots Magic to make it easy to identify. But in this case, I'll just add Jed to the back of it so I know what I'm dealing with here. And it's a pretty simple process, it's pretty quick. There are a few file options that you can change. Obviously we're going with the normal date format here, but I can change the display names to uppercase and do a few other things. But for this case, let me just quickly upload it. And it won't take very long. And here's the, here's the results. We won't show it live because again, it's not too long for a video. But here we can see that the file, the GD file in Roots Magic and my ancestry tree has got exactly the same number of people. Now at the end we'll look at a specific example what it looks like within both Ancestry and Roots Magic. But for now let's go on and do the synchronization again using Roots Magic and Ancestry. So again, I'll go log on to Roots Magic. Here we start in Roots Magic. We don't start in Ancestry. Create a new file, but this time it says download from online tree. And we'll give you two choices, both Ancestry and Family Search. In this case, I'll pick Ancestry. I've not tried downloading a Family Search tree, so I don't know how that goes, but we'll look at Ancestry. I've done this a number of times. Then you select this position for your new file, just as the way we did for a GD file. So in this case, I'll just add full sync on the back of that. And here, once we go to the next step, it will ask you to log into Ancestry using your username and your password. Now, what I've found is I have two-step authentication switched on in Ancestry, and that was causing me some problems. So I switched it off just while I did the synchronization here. Once we get into Ancestry, the logon happens. It will allow me to choose the tree I wish to download or synchronize in this case. And it will go through a number of steps. It'll download the tree, which is pretty quick, import some of the features of the tree, again, pretty quick, and then it will download the media items. In my case, it took about 10 to 15 minutes to download the media items. And here's a summary here of what it came out as. The people are the same. Again, the photos in Ancestry shows the number of photos 
Here it shows the number of media items. Remember this is going to synchronize both my own photographs that I've added to Ancestry and the media items I've linked to. So the numbers in Roots Magic I would expect to be higher than the photographs in Ancestry because it's not Ancestry is not showing me the media that is linking to within the system. That makes any sense. And let's compare the sync and Jedcom. There are some fundamental differences here. The people are exactly the same, but the families are different, the places are slightly different, and the citations are slightly different. But we can see that JEDCOM and SYNC react in slightly different ways. So this is not completely surprising. But the other thing to know on the SYNC here is that the number of media items is 3,759, and the media links, which is how many different records are linked to these media items, it is well well above 17,000. You may also be, be wondering, seeing some red boxes or red squares against documents when you've downloaded the images. This is if you've got some special characters in the name of your image that you've loaded up to Ancestry. And in the case of Roots Magic, out of the three and a half thousand that I transferred down from Ancestry, there was only two. So what I would have to go back is actually I'd have to go back into Ancestry and make sure the names didn't co contain any special characters. Now we've done the synchronization and uploaded a JetCom file. Let's look at the actual results within the system to see how it's impacted the different uploads. So here we are at Frederick George Glass, and this is my original Ancestry record that we was trying to synchronize. As you can see, it has a number of facts and sources and within the gallery I've uploaded three of my own images and what we can do is take a look at the birth within Ancestry and it's linked to a number of Ancestry sources which behind the sources as we can see let's look at that behind the sources is an image so let's go ahead and take a look at Frederick George Glasson within the synchronized tree within Roots Magic, the one I've just done. I've moved over to Roots Magic now. And here's Frederick George Glasson in Roots Magic in the synchronized file in Roots Magic that I created when I did the synchronization with Ancestry. And we see connected to Frederick George Glasson over here on the right hand side under person items, there's three media. I click on here, these are the three media items I uploaded to Ancestry, and we can see they're actually being brought across and placed into a document file, and I can see exactly where that is within my laptop system. But there was a number of other documents connected to Frederick George that were all connected via Ancestry facts. So let me look here at Beth, and instead of showing media right away, I have sources here. And if I click on 1851, there's one media item attached. And this is the 1851 census, which we saw on the Ancestry record, just connected in a slightly different way. And if I click on here, here's the location, again, on my laptop, where this document now is. So you can see that synchronizing Ancestry to Roots Magic is brought over all the images, not just the images I uploaded myself, but the images I've connected to the various people. Now it's important when you're working with two different systems to decide which one really you're going to work in because it's very difficult to synchronize backwards and forwards. I do all my research and updating in Ancestry and I use also Roots Magic for research as well. It's very, very good for running reports finding duplicates, but if I find anything wrong in Roots Magic, I don't correct it in Roots Magic, I go back to the Ancestry file. And what I do is I maintain a, a copy of my Ancestry file in Roots Magic and I re reload the Ancestry file about every two weeks and delete the previous one. So I've got to come back up with all the current images. It's important to go into the file and delete, make sure the images are deleted as well. And that way I know my Ancestry is up to date and I know I've got a current backup. But anyway, let's, before we close the video, let's go over to 
the GEDCOM database in Roots Magic and see what was brought across when I synchronized GEDCOM instead of through the cloud and through the databases. So here we are for a George Glasson that was created for my GEDCOM upload. Um, and we can see immediately looking at the main person here that there was no media attached. So it didn't bring across my media. And if we go across and look at the birth record, if we remember there was there was ancestry images connected to sources here. The sources still come across and they're actually described very well. So I'll go back to 1851. It's described very well. There's a very good citation, but there is no media attached here. So GEDCOM doesn't bring, it's a flat file, it doesn't bring any media across. So it's useful in uploading, but if I want to bring the media or create backups of media, I really have to use the synchronization. Here we've looked at Roots Magic because that's the system that I use. Um, but there are other ways of doing it, I believe, through Family Tree Maker and various other things. But I do know that Roots Magic to Ancestry works very well. And as I said earlier, I use Ancestry to change, make all my changes, but Roots Magic is a brilliant system for me to do investigation and research from it. Uh, but I don't try and don't try and sync both ways. It became very confusing. I tried it a couple of times. But anyway, if you've got any comments on this video, again, this is the way I use it. There's probably other ways of using it. I know there are, uh, but please leave a comment. And if you like the video, like it, and please subscribe to my channel because I'm always putting up new tidbits about ancestry or genealogy in general. Thanks.